So the topic for today is an introduction into GitHub Actions. And with GitHub Actions, you can pretty much do most of the CI, CD pipelines. You could think of it as a competition to uh, Azure DevOps. Of course, Azure DevOps does more, and you will see that. But most people, if they're interested in just doing CI, CD, then GitHub Actions is a very, very good candidate for that. So I'm going to go through about eight slides first, and then we'll go into demos. So first of all, what can you do with GitHub Actions? You can automate your workflows from idea to production. And your workflows can be triggered by any legitimate GitHub event. For example, every time you do a push, you can trigger a workflow. Every time you add an issue, every time there's a pull request, etc. And there are 28 of these events that can happen that will trigger a workflow. You can run these workflows either serially or in parallel. All you do is inside of your source code, you need to create a folder called .github and under there you create another folder called workflow and under there you can put your action files. They are essentially YAML files with the commands or the instructions that are needed to do your CIDC pipeline. The benefit of that, among other things, is the second item here, that your workflow and your CI CD logic becomes part of your source code because it's nothing but a YAML file. So once you have that, it's part of your source code and that's it. You know, you maintain it just like any other piece of code. Also in GitHub, there are of course circumstances when in a workflow, you want to save some confidential information like perhaps usernames, passwords, connection strings, etc., And those are saved in GitHub under settings secrets. Now, when you run a build or you run a deploy, you may want to build or deploy to any one of these operating systems, Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. So GitHub allows that. You can choose what OS you're interested in targeting. There's also a marketplace for these instructions that you would need to do your CI CD. If you go to this site, there are a lot of instructions that you can use for building, for deploying, for handling different operating systems, different languages, etc., etc. I did mention earlier on that there are a number of events that can trigger a workflow. And there are 28 such events, the last I checked. This is where you'd put your secrets. So on your GitHub landing page for a project, you'd click on settings, secrets, and you'd come here and you'd add your secrets. These secrets can be used by your CI CD pipeline to do something. Like if you're doing an SSH connection, you need to have the password. Or if you're pushing into Azure, you need credentials. You can put those credentials in here. Now, what about the usage limits? For free, you can do 20 concurrent jobs or five concurrent jobs targeting Mac OS. So over here, with these numbers, you can target Linux or Windows. And with these numbers, you target Mac OS. So these are the different tiers. This is a paid tier, the pro tier, the team tier, the enterprise tier, and this one here is free. So for most purposes, like when you're trying to evaluate this product or evaluate the capabilities, the free tier is more than enough. And so let's start with a demo. I'm going to show you two demos. The first demo is going to do a CI CD pipeline into Azure. So what I did was to save time, I actually created the web app on Azure. So I'll just go to the web app on Azure so you know it exists. And let's go in here. So you will see an empty web app that has nothing. I just created it. Also, after I created it, I went off and I downloaded the profile settings. So there is this file here, actions, the way, name of my site is actions compound interest. Now you can go to the landing page of your web app in Azure and you can download this file. 
And this file is nothing but a text file that contains the credentials for communicating with that, with your application. So let me open this with text edit here. And you'll see that these, this has your published profiles. I'm gonna close it and come back to it later on. Now, also to save time, we're not going to really create an app. I'm going to download an app that I have on GitHub. And for all I care, you can follow what I'm doing. I'll try to go a little bit slower, but you can follow what I'm doing. I'm going to clone this repository and use that as an app. Now, the reason I want to work with this particular application, it's an ASP.NET application. It consists of two projects. One is the ASP.NET app, and the other one are a bunch of unit tests. And the theme of this particular application is that it's a compound interest calculator. So I've got a bunch of unit tests that make sure that your interest rate is not negative, your amount is not negative, that sort of thing, there's some basic tests. So I'm going to clone this. So I'm going to come into a terminal window and clone this. So git clone, and let me take this address to clone it. So that should clone that application. So that's done. Now, if you check what's in this folder, I have a folder now called compound interest. So let me go into that folder and let's see what's in here. You will see that in here we have a solution file, we have a unit test project, and we have the web application itself. So let me run the web application so you see what it looks like. So to do that, I can do a .NET run like this. So basically this is .NET run on project, the project that happens to be in the web folder. So if I run this, it should run for me this web application. So we'll just have a look at it, see what it does. And then thereafter, it doesn't really matter because the app doesn't really matter here. So over here, let me go to localhost 5001. And so this is the app. To make it a bit easier, I put some default values for the principal, the year, the interest rate, and then the time in years. And if you click on calculate, it will give you the result down here. So this is just a simple compound interest calculator. So let's close this. And I'm going to shut down the app, control C here. Let us change something in this application. In fact, I want to purposely do some changes. There was a green button. I want to make that a red button. And then I want to go into the business logic of this compound interest and break the logic so that the unit tests, so when I do a CICD, I want it to be exposed that there is a bug in this application. So let me open this up in code. I'll go to my web app and let's go to one of the views, index.cshtml. And over here, I'm using bootstrap here, of course, and this button is green because it, it's button success. I'm going to make it button danger. So it's red. That's one change I'll do just so we know that we have something different. And then in the models folder, this is the compound interest class. And down here, this is the one that does the calculation. So I'm going to purposely put a bug here. So instead of the interest rate being divided by 100, it's going to be divided by 1000, which is obviously wrong. So let's exit out of here. And now let me push this into GitHub. So let's go into GitHub and I'll create a repo now. So I'm going to create a new repo in my account. This repo will be called Action Compound Interest. Click create the repository. I want to push my app into this repository, but I pulled it from another repository. So I want to break the link that it has with the previous repository. So I can do that by coming here and saying rm minus rf dot dot git. And what I did here is I simply blew away the git folder here. So now I don't have a repository. I'm going to create a new repository here, git init. So now it creates for me this repository, just initialized a new repository. And of course I can copy this stuff here to push my code. So let's push this code into GitHub. So I'm going to say git add dot git commit minus m and let's say first commit. I should copy this code here and go back and paste it down here and that should 
create a remote repo and push it. So there we go. We have the code now, presumably in GitHub. Let me refresh this page. And there we go, we have our code. I did say that I created an Azure web app. So now let's create a CI CD pipeline right here that pushes the code to Azure. So what I'll do here is now before I deploy the code to Azure, I need to save some of my secrets. And the secret that's very important now are the contents of your published settings. So I'm going to go under settings, secrets, and now I can add a new secret. And the secret I want to add is my web app publish profile. So I'm going to create a new secret here, give it this name. Now, why this name? Well, it's because the script I'm going to use later on, it references this name, but this name can be anything. Yeah, let me get the contents of this profile settings. Close this, come in here and paste this stuff and add a secret. So now I have my secret and my script should be able to read this and deploy the web application into Azure. Okay, now the next thing is we need to create a workflow. And you see this actions here. This is the tab that pretty much delivers to you CI CD, the pipeline. So let's click on actions. And here there are many templates. This one is suggested. Why? Because GitHub has figured that my application is an ASP.NET application. So conveniently put it right at the top. So I'm going to click on set up this workflow and it creates for me a workflow based on YAML. So let me just make this bigger. Let's look at these commands. The workflow is given a name and these are the triggers. So when there's a push on branch master, this workflow will be triggered. If there is a pull request on master, this will be triggered too. And these are the things that are going to run. This is the build step and it runs on Ubuntu latest. You can, if you want, get this to run on Ubuntu, Windows and Mac all at the same time. These are the steps. What is this step here? This step is checking out the code from your source control. The next step is given a name, setup.net core. And this is where it's going to be using .net core version 3.1.101. If you want, we can change this. We can make it 3.1.200, another version. The next is install dependencies. It does a .net restore. The next step is a build. It's a .net build in release mode. And finally, it does the test, .NET test. So pretty much, this is all we need. Now I'm going to, I can change the name of my file here. Notice that this is a YAML file and it's being put in a GitHub folder under that workflows folder. Now these folders I didn't have at the beginning, but they're being created now. So I'm going to change the name of my YAML file to something that makes more sense to me. So I'm going to call it deploy to azure.yaml. And now I can commit this file. This file is part of my source control. So I'm going to click on start commit. And over here, I'm going to say create this file and let's commit it. So now it's been committed. Let's click on actions now. And after a while, you will notice that a workflow will have started. Here it is. Create deploy to Azure. I can click on this workflow and see what it's doing. You see now it's doing a build. There you go. Now it's going through setup.net core, which bringing the version of .net core, installing dependencies. It's doing the restore, build test and so on and so forth. Now you can expect, hopefully if all goes well, it will not work because our test should break. We actually put a bug in there. Yeah, it did break. And we know why it broke. So let's fix that. Let me go back into my application and I should first do a pull. Why? Because my code has changed. I added a new file in GitHub. So I should do a git pull. Okay. And now you can see that this file was pulled from the server. 
Now let me go back and fix that one bug that I created. It should be under web. Compound interest, and here it is. This is the thing we broke. So now there shouldn't be a bug anymore. And let me go in here and see what my status is, git status. And it says there has been a change to compound interest. Let me add this and let me commit it. Okay, and then I guess we can push now. There we go. Now when we push, it's going to trigger another workflow. And here you go, this has been triggered. And hopefully this will work. Okay, it worked. But this is just doing CI, continuous integration. It's not doing deployment. It's not doing CD. Let's go back into our workflow and have a look at it. So if we look at this here, this file, we did a build, we did a test. We didn't do any deployment. So now we need to edit this file so that we do deployment. So I can click on edit here. And in order to do deployment, I'm going to do a bit of changes here. Before jobs, in this syntax, there's a way of entering some environment variables that can be pulled from my secrets. So I'm going to paste this code here. And what it's saying here is that you can enter the name of your web app in Azure. And if you remember, my web app in Azure is actually called Actions Compound Interest, and it matches this. The path of the web app package is going to be just this dot, and the .NET version is 3.1.200. So this became an environment variable. That actually means that instead of hard coding the version of .NET to be 3.1.200, I can read it from this environment variable. So what I'll do is I'm going to replace this, I'll delete that, and replace it with this statement here, which means get your .NET version from this environment variable. Now, the other change that we need to do is we need to publish and then deploy. So I have two steps that I want to add, publish and deploy it. Now, with YAML files, as you all know, the indentation is very, very important. So you can see here, there is some squiggly, which means that you got an error. So I'm going to tab it in until I don't see an error anymore. At this tabbing level, there is no error. So I'm adding two more scripts, .NET publish, and this is going to publish to an output directory, which involves this web app package path, which is a dot, front slash my app. And then it will deploy to Azure. And this is just name is just a name you're giving to the script, which you want it to show up when you, when the workflow runs. And here, this you could say is a piece of logic that is built in that knows how to deploy to Azure. It's going to use this script with these parameters. The first parameter is the app name, and it comes from this environment variable, which is this value here. The second thing is the publish profile, and that comes from secrets, not from an environment variable. Remember, we entered this as a secret. And then the package is, this is the package that's being produced here, and here we're going to use it to deploy. So that's it, folks. We can try it out. And this should push for me the entire application into Azure. So let me start commit here and let's say updated YAML with package and deploy script. Okay, let's commit the changes. Now let's go to actions and have a look. Here it is. And I'm hoping this will work. It will take a little bit longer because it is doing these steps. You see, these are the two new steps. The last two steps, publish and run Azure Web App Deploy. These are the ones that we added today, just now. So it's going to do those. You see the publish has passed. 
and now it's deploying to Azure. So when we're all done, this particular page should work. Let's go back here. I'm just gonna wait on it to finish. And I think when it's all done, if I refresh this, it should work. We come here, refresh this, and yeah, it worked. So this deployed to Azure and we have our red button. If you remember, I did a small change and it was, this was green before, now it became red. Needless to say that anytime you make a change in your source code and you push it, it will automatically find its way to Azure because one of the triggers for this particular workflow is a commit. Okay, this is the first demo that I'm going to show you. The next demo I want to do is very, very similar to what I did now. I just want to show you that in addition to doing like a demo on Azure, I'm going to do the next demo on deploying this particular app, the same app into Docker Hub. So what I was saying was that if you look at my code or the code here in the workflows folder, I have just one workflow, which is deploy to Azure. I want to add another one, which is deploy to Docker Hub. Now I need two more secrets in order to deploy to Docker Hub. I need the username and password. So let me go into settings here and I'm going to add two more secrets. And the first secret is my Docker user. And my Docker name is N-E-L-N-A-S-R-Y. The next thing is my Docker password. So I'm going to add another secret, Docker password. But of course, I don't want you to see my password. So I'm going to take this onto my other screen. I'm going to enter my password, save it, and bring it back. Uh, benefit of having two screens. So now I have my Docker password and my Docker user. Now let's go back to my code. In my code, I need to create a Docker file. Because if you want to use Docker and you want to push an image into Docker Hub, of course you have to create that Docker file with the instructions to create the image. So I'm going to add a new file here and I'm going to call it Docker file. But you know what, before I do that, I better do a pull. Why? because code has changed on the server. So let me do a, a git pull. And so we got the latest YAML file. Now I can add a new file here, which I will call docker file. Now the contents of the docker file are intended to build the docker image for this application. And this is the code. We're going to build our image on top of this Microsoft image. We're going to copy the code into the container. We're going to do .NET restore and do a publish and so on and so forth. So this is all standard stuff. Okay. So this is supposed to build for me the image and the entry point is .NET web.dll. Why web? Because the project that really matters that you want to run in a container is the web application and it's the name of the application simply web. This is it. Let's close all of this. We don't need any of this anymore. So let me push this back into the repository. Git add dot git commit minus M and say added Docker file. And then git push origin master. Okay, so we go back to our application and we should see that we have now the Docker file. And here it is. Now let's do our deployment. So I'm going to add another action. So come in here, actions, and we already have an action, but we want to add yet another action. So I'll click on new workflow. 
and I'm going to need to find a suitable workflow that knows how to handle Docker images. And here is one. Build a Docker image to deploy, run, or push to a registry. So let's click on this. And you can see here that all this does is build an image. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't really publish. But let's test it out. This will probably not work because it assumes that the Docker file is in the root folder. But my Docker file is not in the root folder. My Docker file is in the web folder, in a subfolder. So for that to work, we need to add this. There is a command that I need to add to tell it which folder is it should build the Docker file from. And this is the command. This is the statement here. The working directory is, let me make this bigger, sorry. The working directory is this web folder. So now let me commit and see if it's going to work. But it doesn't do exactly what I wanted because I wanted to push to the registry, but that's not yet working. Now also I'm going to execute out, exit out of here and rename this file so it makes sense to me. So I'm going to call it deploy to Docker Hub. You can give it whatever name you want, but this makes more sense to me. Start commit and I'll say created start commit. And let's go and see. Actions. Oh, what happened here? I think I didn't click on commit new file. So let's go and look at this. Look, there are two workflows that are running. It's, it's actually looking at the name of the, uh, of the commit, but it, it actually did two. If you look at, yeah, it did two actions and they both completed successfully. The name there is misleading because it's the name of the commit itself. Anyways, what I want to say is that we didn't really push to Docker Hub. So let us push to Docker Hub. In order to avoid the confusion, what I'm going to do is maybe there is no need to push to Azure anymore. So in my code workflows, this deploy to Azure, and you know what, I'm going to change the name here to YAML zero. So it ignores it because if it doesn't find a YAML file there, it simply ignores it. So I'm not really interested in pushing to Azure anymore because I know that that works. I'll say disabled uh, Azure workflow. So when I commit, it's going to actually do the one to Docker, but of course the one to Docker doesn't push to, to Docker. I need to add some more logic. So let's go back here and edit this one to Docker Hub. And let me edit this. And what are some things I want to do? This thing here, I'm going to delete all of these and replace them with some logic that I have. And let me indent this. Okay, we can put spaces here. So the first one is the checkout. And then this one is build and deploy image to Docker Hub. And it uses this built-in script. But there are some parameters that you can add here. The path, which is the folder that contains the Docker file is the web folder. And the username is coming from the secrets. The password is coming from the secrets. The repository, by the way, in, in Docker, this is my username in Docker. So I'm going to call this app compound. In fact, let me call it something else. Let me just call it interest. Interest and the tag is V1. So this should build and deploy. So let's commit this. Uh, let's say added deploy logic to Docker workflow. So now let me go back into actions and see what's happening. This is it. And let's see what's going to happen. Oops. What is the problem here? Okay, there's a problem with the username and password. 
yes, you know what? It's my typo. It's my mistake. I should have, yeah, let's see. Uh, code workflows. In the secrets, I've got Docker user, and here I've got Docker username. So I have to change it to Docker user. And let's commit. Let's say fixed user parameter. Yeah, that should do it. This is building the image. So it has to pull all these images from, uh, from the source and then build it. A lot of these layers. Now the real test is to pull this image from GitHub and run it. So if you do this command here, Docker run, and it's going to map port 80 to 888 on my server. And this should be interest. I made a typo here. It should run on my machine. Let's look at Docker ES and see if it is running. Yes, this image is running. So if I go into localhost 8888, it should work. And there you go. So this is it. Thank you for watching this presentation.